I know I'm not supposed to be seen with this guy now, but he is awfully cute. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Welcome to Micanopy. I'm George the Antique Nomad, and I am so excited to bring you to one of my favorite towns in Florida. This was the first town in Florida settled by Americans right after the Spanish and English ceded Florida in 1821. It grew to 600 people right away, and it's still the same size, and it's such a sweet little place. Nowadays, it's full of antiques, and I can't wait to show you around. Well, the outpost says that it has original Florida Highwaymen paintings, so let's take a look and see. Nice India brass bowl, 1960s vintage. The piece underneath it I'm curious about. I think I'd like to see that with the enameling. This tray is Tiffany Dioro line. They did a lot of brass and enameled work. It's very beautiful and very expensive. This little plate is around $400. But he does have a lot of inexpensive smalls in cases, and I see some things worth buying. I like those miniature oil lamps. They need some shades, though. That might be hard to find. Some brass opera glasses. And look at the carving on that elephant. Well, this store has everything from Tiffany to, well, mm, Tiffany. Okay, maybe he doesn't have any music by Tiffany, but he does have Bill Monroe, he's got bluegrass, he's got old 60s pop songs like Sugar Shack by Jimmy Gilmer and the Fireballs, and rock era stuff. Vinyl's become legit, and you see it in full-on antique stores now. This is a neat piece. It's Nippon, and it is around 1910. It's got an Imari red coloration and looks a lot like Imari wear from that period. Does not have a back stamp because we didn't really enforce that rule until later. Nice cut amber to clear bohemian glass and a lot of nice cut glass in here. I'm seeing people starting to have interest in cut glass. I was pleasantly surprised to see cut glass decanters selling over a hundred dollars again. I think people are starting to catch on. And then that one with the silver collar is a Leonard piece from the late 70s that's pressed. He's got jugs and crocs. The Monmouth with the nice leaf there is an early 1900s. And there's also, uh, yeah, prices are, well, you know, it's retail. A lot of people come here as a tourist destination. But I think we're going to find a bargain in here somewhere. I like the challenge of going into a high-end antique store and finding something that I can buy for resale because it's usually nice juried merchandise. Oh, this is great. Okay, I'll take all of them. I have found a fellow with 1960s to 80s vintage Seminole dolls. And... His pricing is very fair, and I'm going to buy the little ones. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. He really does have some nice things in here. This is a good store. I'm not surprised. I remember all the stores here were good, and they've had an established clientele for years. I believe that's off a of Fenton lamp. And then horn pieces. Blanc du Chien. That's probably a good price for the pair with the cut work like this. Anything that's pierce work like that, it's hard to make those designs. This guy's got a pretty surprising selection. I come up here and we have mid-century modern. An entire showroom. I think the prices are largely pretty fair. Some of them are pretty good. One of them I think is good enough to take home. Now this is an amazing credenza, Danish, and yes, he has a very high price on that. But it's pretty fabulous. It's just about as good as you could expect. On the other hand, this chrome lamp over here is only $75. And I believe all it needs is either a larger proper bulb or a glass dome shade, which is a common size, that fits in there. 
So I think that's a buyable piece. And then these lamps are very sweet. These are obviously much earlier, 1920s perhaps, with the mirrors. Very sweet. Look at this crazy jug vase, $1,200, but wow. A lot of those are made in the Carolinas. Willie Daniels, we've got more highwaymen here. Buckner. I like Buckner's. He tends to emphasize the clouds. In Florida's clouds are what make up for the flat landscape. It's like having mountains here. Mary Carroll. This is the only woman in the Highwaymen. My mother met her. There's Wright. And then Al Black on the left here. Hezekiah Baker, very nice Moriage. And this one is going to be antique. It looks like around 1900 when they were doing similar designs on the Satsuma ware. Nice snowberry vase in Roseville. I like this piece down here, the gilded. There's just something about that pattern in the gilding that works for me. And then we have a carnival glass piece from about 1910. Antique stores are great places to get oriented to local issues as well as to other antique and art destinations. Obviously, they're trying to avoid having the Dollar General open in the historic district, which I can see. Well, that place was fun. I liked the vibe. I liked the way it was laid out. It was great having good service. And, you know, I found something. I mean, obviously, Micanopy downtown, the antique mall, you're going to find more bargains. But here, you know, I expect things to be a little bit spendy because this is a tourist attraction. It's a cool place to go. A lot of people who are not strictly antiquers come here. And, you know, we need a retail outlet, too, so it's great that they're doing well, but I did find things I could buy for resale, so, you know, you just have to look everywhere you go. Look how pretty all this is. This is a really verdant place. It feels like old Florida. I just love it here, and you can tell it's a place that people like to go because there's a bunch of people around, although it's the middle of the week, and so these folks are not open today. Had I known I was coming, I'd have made an appointment because they do come in by, an, by appointment. And a lot of smaller dealers do that, where they're only open when someone is coming specifically because otherwise they're outsourcing merchandise and conducting estate sales and all the other things that a lot of us do in this business. But they have a nice little St. Paddy's Day display, which I'm sure will get changed when they come in because that just ended. Look at that great 60s lamp. I wonder how much that is. So now we're going all the way to the other side of Micanopy, which is right across the street. And it's got more shops and some art galleries and more antiquing, it looks like. So we're going to take a look. Just a great little town. We're going to do a little bit of window shopping because there is a lot here and I want to get to show you at least a taste of all of this town. This is a very nice looking art gallery and I love the seahorse. Look at all the repurposed stuff that went into that springs and tools and gears and all that kind of thing. Oh, huh. and these are from Yankee Stadium before they renovated. That's pretty cool, $1,200 for the pair. So see, they do have some stuff that is collectible and vintage as well. As nice as this place looks, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm mainly going to try to focus on places that have antiques because there's a lot of specialty shops. This place has a lot of fun fashion and tie-dye and cool things like that. This is the Garage Cafe, which looks like it is closed. Again, we're in the middle of the week. We're just going to see what we see. Here's the shop, wishing you peace and joy and year-round Christmas room. Ooh, look at that. So Christmas stores do really well in antique destinations because the vibe goes along, but what they usually do is put a lot of new Christmas in and oftentimes displayed on old furniture. 
That's because it's just really hard to get this amount of old Christmas stuff. So you see a lot of reproductions and go-alongs, but they're generally very good quality. And the furniture here is nice. That cancer table was priced about right. And you'll see that, again, most of the antiques here are being used as props. Old Chinese altar table. At least the shape appears to be Chinese. But Wow, if you love Christmas, this is definitely a place that you would enjoy seeing in person. If you're looking for a brick and mortar store, or in this case a tin and mortar store, this old outbuilding, which was originally, I believe, a blacksmith shop in the late 1800s, is for sale, including inventory. And I have to say, this would be a great town to do a brick and mortar because it's very centrally located, lots of traffic, and a good place to ship from a little farther north in the state, not as high as shipping costs as down in the southern parts. Let's take a look here past this old red bicycle and see what's in the garden shop. See if they've got old stuff or if it's mostly plants and newer decor. And yeah, it looks like more along that line, although I see an old table in the background there, but very cute. And what's in this old building? Well, we're around the front of the old building, and it is another antique shop. And again, it's midweek. This one's not open, but we've got the Lover's Lane Bicycle Built for Two planter there. That's cute in the chartreuse. Nice piece of spatter glass, and ooh, look at this bronze. I like the lean to it. I think anything that has action in bronze makes it more interesting as a sculpture. Oh, and then this orange and red lamp. I need to show you this because this is a pretty lamp, and you'll see these in the wild, but that's because they're reproductions made 30 years ago. Roseville Donatello, I believe, and a nice Weller piece there. And, oh, I like that bird. But let's go back to the lamp really quickly. They were supposed to be galley. You can see the attempt at a signature, but they're not real. This store is open on weekends, and a lot of the stores in little towns like this open on the weekends because it's a destination, and that's when their people come. And you see the owl guarding their store. Some nice things inside. It's fun to window shop. I'd like to go into this place. I'll have to come back here when some of these stores that we're missing are open because there'll obviously be a lot more to show you. Those Italian Murano glass figurines in the window there are worth a few hundred dollars. And that's a very nice cranberry enameled Victorian compote and bowl set, berry bowl set. Unusual with that pedestal. They're usually flat bottomed. The golf ball here is a treasure craft cookie jar from about 1980. They did a whole line of sports pieces, including a football, a soccer ball, a baseball, and a basketball. And then you see some McCoy pottery, some American bisque, a whole shelf of cookie jars. And that's a good one there you don't see very often with the barn. This place is just opened, and it looks like they're going to have some sort of a vendor fair here to celebrate their grand opening. I'm sure that as the season gets going that we'll see a lot of street fairs and people doing uh, outdoor displays and vending. I like this window. I don't know anything about that figure. She's new, but she's cool. So I'm not sure whether to think that this is a story of redemption or just to show that people change, but one of the town founders was a very famous man in his time, Moses Elias Levy. He was born in Morocco. He was a Jewish merchant, but what they don't say is that he was a slave trader initially. He made a fortune. He retired in 1820. In 1821, he came here and helped found this town and became an abolitionist and wrote a paper about how to eventually abolish slavery because he was in the conundrum of a lot of people. He had plantations and farms and Here's this economy built on something that is not right and not sustainable. So what are you going to do? And on top of it, he was Jewish. So what he did was he started a refuge so that they could get out of oppressive places in Europe and work in a community settlement. And it was the first Jewish settlement of its kind in the United States. I believe five families moved there and it was there until 1835 when it was burned down in the Seminole Wars. Micanope is a seminal name, actually Mikasuki, more correctly. He was the chief in the area, and they named the town after him to help mollify him. Delectable collectibles, fine jewelry and antiques. They've been here since 1979. There's very beautiful ornamental iron. That tells me that they probably deal in fine jewelry. 
Howard Pierce Quail on the right. I'm not sure who did the seal. It might be Royal Ducks. That little guy's been in the window a long time, but it is a nice early piece of Peters and Reed, which was, again, similar to Weller Owens, Zanesville, all in that area in Ohio, all copying each other's designs. And then that's a fun plate, mulberry on the outside and teal in the middle. That would be 1890s. Flow blue in the window. A nice selection of Majolica. And then next to it, Siddenstricker, which really fits in very well, even though it's made 100 years later. It's neat when you figure out how to mix things that are older and newer into a cohesive look. This is one of the later buildings in Micanopy, 1906. Vintage ceramics are one of the specialties of this store. And look at this beautiful bird in the waves, pedestal, jardinier, majolica, 795. It's from the early 1900s. This is a wonderful piece, too. This is Weller Copper Tone. Anytime you see those frogs, it is Weller. This is an unusual piece. It's even got the Weller Copper Tone sticker, which is often gone. It's priced at 2000 That may be a little lofty, but that stuff sells for a lot of money, so look for those frogs. This is a more recent artist, about 30 years old, Robert Eichold, and that's something you'll sometimes see in the wild, and it does sell for several hundred dollars now. Nice piece of Roseville there. And then she's got this case back here with a lot of French portraits. Now you'll see French writing in newspaper as the backing on a lot of the older ones. These were made in the 18th through 20th centuries. So you want to look at it closely also to see whether it's painted on ivory or porcelain or just paper because the uh, values will vary depending, but they are really beautiful and very collectible. This is an asparagus tray in Majolica. It was to specifically serve asparagus. These were for fancy tables where you would have an individual piece for a specific reason like that. Beautiful piece. Look at the detail and the painting of this guy, European tobacco humidor. And there's another amazing piece of Majolica. Whenever you see the applied deep pieces like this, they're valuable. This world piece in the middle is Nyloix Mission Wear. Those are not painted on. Those are actual natural clay colors in the base of the clay itself. And then this table here has a bunch of pretty pieces. A uh, lot of nice Roseville that you see in the background there in various patterns. She's just got such a great selection. Uh, and you see the early drip glaze Roseville as well as the pine cone and floral pieces from the 1930s that are more familiar to a lot of collectors. Nice pieces of Weller pottery as well. Uh, she obviously really loves this stuff. And what's not to love? Look at the color and style on this very unusual, hard-to-find piece of Weller again. I have never seen a piece of this particular pattern before. This is the Sabrinian pattern, and it's got the old Weller stamp from around the late 20s, early 30s. And then this showcase has a bunch of blue and white porcelain, but I like the wall pockets. These are also Roseville. I believe all of these are Roseville, various oh, patterns from the 1920s and 30s. And they're just so much fun. You can do a whole wall. The drip glaze with the gray there is Carnelian, another Roseville pattern. This is a very pretty Italian faience piece, and you can see these prices are full retail in this store, but I did manage to buy a nice piece of Czech jewelry here, so it always pays to ask. Sometimes they'll discount. This is Lost Ark Antiques, and they are closed today as well, but we can at least stroll through the garden and show you some of the vintage ornamental iron, porch furniture, garden art, things that they have on the outside, because those are specialties of theirs, including these very stalwart dogs who are guarding the porch. It's closed. You're not supposed to come up here. Well, I'm going to anyway, just to take a picture and show you their lovely verdant garden. There's a nice patio set, 
and I've got to show you this great concrete dog after I look at the wicker. Well, the wicker's a little beaten because it's been outside in Florida, but they have nice wicker inside, and here's the dog with the basket in his mouth. Isn't that sweet? All these garden pieces are for sale. The baker's racks, I like what they did with that old chest of drawers. Funky and cool, and it's just a very nice place to sit a spell on a warm winter's day. This is the approach to the freeway to Micanopy. It's also the approach to Antique City Mall. This place was known as Smiley's, and it was a great mall, a regular stop of mine, great dealers, and they tragically had a fire in 2017, and it was an electrical problem in the metal building, and it took out about half the dealers. Fortunately, this was such a great location that a bunch of dealers got together and put in an auction house, rebuilt the building, and reopened the same year that the fire happened. And you can tell it's a good location because look at all that freeway traffic out there. And by the fact that a giant vase is walking out the door. And here's what you do with all the boring patterns of dishes that you can't sell. Now well, let's see, the Mickeys are $8 each and their productions and their Japan, so that's the right era. This booth is half off and less firm, so let's see what this looks like. Because I'm thinking it's Capo de Monte of some sort. $20, it looks like an older piece. Still 20th century though, I suspect. Nice enough, I already have a lot of that though. This is a compact with the room for the lipstick, but the lipstick's gone. This is an old piece, and it doesn't look it, but it's painted glass, actually. It's milk glass under there, not ceramic. Popular thing to do around 1910, and it's priced at 39 There is a Dragonware tea set, complete from the 50s. Treasurecraft barrel line. This is the period where they have the plastic handles and they don't always wear very well as you can see on the one in the back. Actually both of them are losing that chrome plating. Treasure Craft was made to be trendy and on point at various times. It wasn't necessarily intended to last 50 years so that's one of the reasons you have to really look at condition because it makes a huge difference in the value. A couple of Florida looking candles. Big case of pink depression glass. Well, this old chest is huge. 1839 blanket chest. Wonder if we can figure out a country of origin. Or whether it's southern as opposed to northern, if it's American at all. But inside this gives it away. We see that it is Eastern European and a lot of these did start coming out after the wall fell. It looks pristine inside because it's been sealed for years, so no oxidation. That's why it looks clean as a whistle in there. Well, it's in fabric rather than leather, and it is dirty and would have to be clean, but this is a Wasili chair. We could look at here to see how it's joined to determine its age. It looks like it's a hexagonal screw, so that's going to be sometime 1980s, I believe. I think that's also when we see a lot of the fabric. I wish I saw a price on that. Well, this is a pattern I haven't seen before. It's booths, and I mainly know them for their real old willow pattern, but this is dragon. You can see why. They're really fun if you like Asian motif or if you're collecting dragons, that sort of thing. I have a friend who's a dragon collector. She'd like this set. This is priced at full retail at 65, but look how perfect the condition is. Early 70s in that pink. Somewhere there was a 1970s Lucite chandelier missing its prisms, and these are only a dollar each. If you just had any chance of finding that lamp, this would be great to have. I'm noticing that Native American collectors are really prizing beadwork, and these are really finely done. These are Paiute or Washoe from Utah the Baccarat Rose Tiente, 
And then this case has all sorts of Cub Scout and Boy Scout stuff, including first aid kits and lots of patches. And there are collectors, although the collectors really like the old, old stuff. A lot of those are military there as well, including this presentation for the first mechanical infantry badge in Belgium. And there's General MacArthur. Here we've got a couple of camp stoves. I see these up in Kentucky a lot more than I do here, but they're very useful for a lot of people who were living in cabins still. These were an alternative if you didn't have electricity. Stoplights are very popular. I see them at auctions. A lot of cities are replacing older ones, and the old metal ones are the ones that you want. And this particular one I think is priced under 200, and I've sold them for as much as two and a half, so seems like a good deal. And then this train set is a Marx. It's the steam streamliner and it's neat in the big box. If it's a chair and it looks like this, you should buy it. Fiberglass, could have been from a bowling alley, a laundromat, just doesn't really matter. It's that tulip base, the fact that it swivels, it's in reasonable condition. There are some chips. Fiberglass is a little bit of work to take care of, and you don't want to leave it outside in the sun forever and ever. Now, I like these. The acrylic ones that don't light are cool, but these are great because you can actually use them. They're butane, and they run for hours and no dripping so that you don't have to be bothered when you're having your penthouse party in the big city with your well-groomed mate. I am going to get these. $8 is a great price. And also a great price is this tacked 1950s vinyl bench slash toy chest slash trunk. I like the shape. I suspect somebody made this at home, but what great color and look at the design on the top and it's only $55. If I could repack the car, I would take it. The red line to Moscow. Well, I don't think that was a wall phone. It is $75. It's in pristine condition. That's a reasonable price. And this is a cool churn because this is a rocking churn. It's priced at, oh gosh, what is that? A couple hundred, and that seems to make sense. But look at the way it goes back and forth. This is how you would actually churn your butter. I suppose you could have just sat on one end of it and rocked back and forth. So you got to take some of the drudgery out of that chore. This is going to date to right about 1900. It's a swing churn, as it says, and I just think that's the neatest design and a great shape and could be used for storage, so maybe practical. This is a tale of two decanters. I believe they are both Blanco, priced at $70, and this one may be Rainbow, and that one has water damage. This one is definitely Blanco. It's a good piece. Very greasy though, and I'd be a little worried about whether it would clean up. I know it's a hassle and a headache, and I'm not always perfect about it myself when I'm running show to show and <laughs> store to store, but cleaning your merchandise makes a big difference. I'm afraid to buy those bottles because I don't know, even with the discount, whether they'll come clean. Because I can't tell if the staining is on the inside or the outside, and I don't have the equipment here to wash them and find out, so I'm going to leave them. It's unfortunate for me and the dealer. They've got a big area in the back of the store that is a dealer who specializes in childhood items, pop culture things, although I also like the Bakelite handled uh, magnifying glass for $39.95. And you can see that Donald Duck, well, he went through some things. He had to go see an analyst, so that's going to be from about 1970. The pink elephants go with the pink elephant cocktail shakers. I could use that set with mine. There's a neat stereo camera, and behind is a bazooka bubblegum. Bazooka stuff can be pricey, some of the premiums especially. This is signed by Gail Sayers, the very famous Chicago Bears football player. I've always been a Bears fan, and I would certainly enjoy having that, but I don't think I want to pay 100 this is a really fun vanity mirror. These were popular in the Art Deco period, late 30s through the early 50s. You see these. They're good sellers. Hi there. And it's priced about right in the $50 range. I usually get between 50 and 65 for them when I sell them. And here's a Fez. 
There is a bunch of furniture here. It's more traditional brown furniture. This does sell well in Georgia and Alabama, and we're close enough to those places that you're going to see it. And it can be really economical for people starting a home. This is only $115, and you'd have to do something about the top, maybe paint or refinish. Here is an old check writer. This is a safeguard. That's going to be from about the teens or early 20s. And then a bunch of ashtrays. People do like collecting the ashtrays. They like collecting them back then, too, because nothing said class like sh giving someone an ashtray that you stole from a motel, right? Key fobs, lots of little stuff, and ooh, come to Papa. Yes. Oh, I'm going to buy these. Wow. Looks like there's four. They're from the Seattle World's Fair. I get double that price in Seattle for them, and I don't find this stuff very often unless I'm away from Seattle nowadays. So I'll take those. And then here's a bunch of old films, which are kind of fun. Little kitty films for the 8mm. Oh yes, that's politically correct. Mm-hmm. No cultural appropriation there. And Aladdin's Lamp. Fun graphics. And then the sport parade, and the discus thrower looks like the logo from the 32 LA Olympics, but I think this is a little bit later than that. In here we have a neat ambrotype with the union case. It was, says it's a daguerreotype case, but ambrotypes replace daguerreotypes because they were a little more stable and easier to take care of, even though they're still glass. So that's an ambrotype there, but it's neat to see the back of the case with the advertising in it. And then there's a funky, weird Kodak camera in a box there. This is a fun space. Also has a film reel down here. This is a real one. This is how they would send the films out. And people like to put the reels on the walls in home theaters now. But this one has the film in it. A hundred bucks is about right. I've sold these for that price. This funky plastic fantastic 60s thing fantastic these were just fantastic. cheap novelties but look at the fun colors in that poppy look and then oh here's the treasure craft matador from 1958 no bull in sight you see the matador a lot and rarely a bull because the horns broke and then blue mountain pottery figures there i like the cat and dog oh dear she lost her dress and a neat acrylic lamp here. I really like the design of this piece. This is going to be from the 1980s, and it's priced about right at a hundred and a quarter. I know I'm not supposed to be seen with this guy now, but he is awfully cute. This is the episode where he douses himself in perfume to win the love of his Penelope pussycat, and it works. Now, Empoli glass can go from very refined to, well, in this case, in my opinion, a little garish, but you've got to give them credit for really decorating this one with the dimensional little roses as well as jewels. This will glow under a black light. That's 30s depression glass. And then over here, a big space full of fun and funky and interesting advertising and a washing machine. I just sold my blue washing machine in Kentucky. The old washing machines do sell. And then here we've got a great display of case knives. This is an old store display. There's maybe one or two missing that were sold out of it, but the rest of them are still in there. This looks like something that's going to date back to 1970s. And of course, Case made all sorts of stuff, scissors and knives and uh, utility knives as well as pocket knives. This is a very expensive store display. I think they want something like 8000 for the whole thing, which seems like a lot to me. But, you know, it is cool to have the entire thing. Right down the road from here is the historic home, which was the place that Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings lived when she wrote The Yearling, which was a very popular book when it came out in the 30s and made into a very popular movie. She also wrote about Cross Creek and living there, and that's a very good book. These first editions in the dust jackets are pretty valuable. They're pricing in the 80 to 200 range. But for collectors, for signed editions, this one's 300 That's a reasonable price, and they are really well written. This is a Ford promotional car, a Thunderbird. We see the Thunderbirds a lot. But what's different about this one is you flip it over, and it has the Philco radio. This is when they decided to start promoting Philco, their 
branch that made the audio equipment and the interior accessories. It doesn't have the trap for the battery, but it seems to be all there otherwise. And if it does work, $67.95 is a fair price for these. You don't always find them in working order, so take a battery with you to test. Okay, here we go. If you were a kid in the 80s or 90s, you probably were raised on big time wrestling and those other various wrestling shows, and here you've got Goldberg and Sting as walkie talkies. And all this old stuff from that period is very collectible now. The figurines sell for decent money, especially if you have the original packaging. You've got Junkyard Dog there, um, you've got a couple of the real greats. These are good because these are airlines with their old advertising logos and a lot of these are gone now. Pan Am is gone, TWA is gone, Eastern is gone. People collect old airline advertising just like they do railroad. And down here I had to show if anyone is out there looking for a Will George standing flamingo. I'm not sure if that planter is one, but there's a lot of cool flamingos in this case out of the 50s, and I like the gal with the basket on her head. And then down here, a lot of fun kids toys. This place really does have a lot of cool stuff and things that you just don't see in every antique store. It's not just glass and china here. There's a lot of neat childhood stuff. This woven basket with the oranges in the bottom is an interesting Florida souvenir piece from the 1930s. But this is why I'm here. This case is priced 75% off and I am going to have some fun. Take a look at that. Apparently the dealer is retiring. That Lucite steer head is fabulous. I'll take that. The check glass doctor with the limb is a little odd. And here we have the pitcher and tumbler set from Metlock's California Poppy Trail. They were a huge dinnerware maker, one of the big five in California, and this is hand-painted. It's not to be mistaken for Franciscan Ivy. And then down below here we have a Blendo glass set. So while I'm standing here with Rat Fink, I want to just ask if you'd please hit that subscribe button, if you haven't already. If you would please check out memberships, hit that join button, it'll tell you all about those. Click to like this video, thumbs up, and leave comments. And if you want to be notified about future videos, click that bell, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!